You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia, and Shallow Water Fishing Adventures Baits, online, located in Mount Airy, Maryland. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Monday Night Live. I am sorry for the delay. Screw you, StreamYards. I probably just got demonetized for saying that because that wasn't 30 seconds, but I don't care. Sorry for the delay. That was not our fault. It was the software. I know there was not an episode that dropped this morning. That is because this is the week of iCast. Um, I sent down a couple of people down to iCast this year. They have all the technology. We will be live streaming Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday, I believe right now, from iCast. Uh, Tuesday is going to be on the water demonstrations, kayaks, things like that. And then Best in Show is going to be rewarded on Thursday morning. So we're going to have a walkthrough of all the different items that were Best in Show. Uh, fun fact, nothing that's won Best in Show has actually been good from the bait side. One time it was like a rubber duck. The other time it was a beer can. It was bad. But there are some also cool items that never get voted number one that actually do end up working and, and helping you out. So that's all coming this week. Normal podcast ep- episodes will be uploaded next week. We have a great group on. This is the the origin, the core of the BFL boys. We didn't really travel this year, but we need to get them on. Uh, one guy, he came on. Um He's, you know him, you love him. He fishes the res a few times. He, the legend, Matt, how are you doing? I'm doing good, sir. How are you doing? I'm doing well. You've had a fun weekend. It was a good weekend indeed. And we're going to be getting into that here. The The other part of this Matt trio is, uh, you know him, you love him, uh, SB Fishing. Dude, you have had a hell of a... Uh, how the hell do I put this? You can deal with adversity extremely well. <laughs> when it comes Maybe to Maybe I us. come off that way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There's no other way to do it. <laughs> Just fish. If people had that attitude, though, we wouldn't be in Ukraine right now. We would have the world would have peace if we all had that chill attitude. Mm-hmm. What have you got? What have you been up to? Who are you talking Me? to? Or Matt? Both. <laughs> Both. What have you guys been up to? Just fishing, man. Trying right. to fish all these tournaments and keep the boat alive and the van alive and edit videos and take a little trip once in a while here and there with the girlfriend and just fishing. It's just been fishing for me pretty much recently, but um, work's been real slow for the last couple months. So I've had an opportunity to be on the water a whole lot and it's paying off right now. So the last time, and I think I, I was going to say just, I was going to say Matt, but that's, that's wrong. So we'll say Mr. McCluskey or whatever the heck you want me to call you. Um, the last time I, I talked to you that you like gypsy, that was a good one. <laughs> Mick gypsy. That was, okay. Mick. That was probably my favorite one, but don't call Okay. <laughs> the last time you were down in Roanoke, are you still, as you put it, the gypsy or where is your location now? I'm in Northern Virginia right now. I'm back okay. home in Fishburn. Oh shit! Right on, because yeah, I think crap. you've been on a tear. Because creeping on your social media and our group message chat, you went down to the Chesden and you you pissed off a bunch of locals there. <laughs> you you went to the Tidal Potomac, which is not where I think people would put on the back of your card, your baseball card, as one of those locations. And you two back to back big event second places. That's pretty freaking impressive. I wouldn't say big. I mean, it was 25 to 30 boats on Saturday and 40 boats Sunday. But I mean, we're not talking BFL size, but it's still it was it was good. But we could start at Chesden. Chesden was just a whim, basically. But um, I rolled. I've like I said, I've been slow for work. Um, My mom recently moved in with my uncle down in Richmond while she builds her house down that way. And I was not working. So I was like, I'm going to come down and spend the week down there. And I found out through Matt that there was some Chesden tournaments or one Chesden tur- tournament on Tuesday. So I was like, screw it. I'll bring the boat and we'll go down there and fish. And I fished with my cousin and he doesn't really fish. He was just kind of there to drink a couple of beers and hang out with me for a couple of few hours. But, um, we just jumped in that first one and I had, I don't think I've been on the lake in probably two years and it just, I ran some stuff that 
I found two years ago and some new stuff and it just worked out and popped 20 pounds and got a W. <laughs> uh, Matt or SB, this is going to be weird just saying, but um, how is Chesden fishing? I, I did have, I think it was last year, I talked to the Virginia Department of Wildlife Resources and they said like that place is a hidden gem. Like it's actually really turning on. Yeah, it's definitely fishing really good right now. A lot of big fish caught, a lot of big bags. I think... So, I mean, obviously, Maddie was just talking about that Tuesday nighter. You won that with 20 and change. Was it 20 and change? Yeah, it's 20 pounds, like eight ounces or something like that. Keep in mind, that's also in like three hours. Mm -hmm. And really, it's like less because of the running you have to do in the John boat. But <laughs> just stupid. Like, sat the Saturday tournament following that, or maybe it was the week after or whatever, that was what, 27? Yeah, because we fished Tuesday night, Thursday night, and Saturday. Thursday it was like mm. 14 something. Yeah. <laughs> and we had 12 and a half pounds for three fish. And I was like, oh man, we're not going to do, we're not going to get a check. And it's yeah. just like, it changed so fast. And then Saturday, as Matt said, it was like 26 and change 27, something like that. And I had 20 pounds on Saturday or 1990 something on Saturday. And mm. there was three other bags over 20 pounds. So it's fishing good. Mm -hmm. Definitely fishing good. I'm going to have to get out there to that because that, that's a place. I don't know if the Elite 70s has gone there yet. Uh, I, it might be too small. I think you could probably make that work there. It, it's just there's so many mm -hmm. lakes in that size range that are – like how big is Cheston? 3,000? 3, 3, it's it's, too, too small. It, yeah, I think it would be too that's small big. for that. I mean, they do have like those weekend tournaments, or at least they used to have like massive draws, like over 100 boats. Even, I mean, dude, even those Tuesday or Thursday nighters have like 60 boats show up. Wow. Yeah, there was like 40 the first Tuesday and like yeah. 50. We were boat 51. We were the last boat out because bo Tuesday I got boat number one in my John boat. I'm like, well, this is useless. <laughs> Everybody's going to smoke me. And then Thursday we ended up getting boat 50 and we get there and they're like, there's this whole calling out the boats thing. You got to stand on the end of the dock and check all the live wells and we're like oh well we went from first to 50 i wonder what's gonna happen tonight and we're gonna suck but um yeah there's a, there's a lot of boats it's, but it's a small lake it clearly fishes pretty small basically i mean i can't say that because unlike fountainhead there's a significant shallow bite when the water's 90 degrees so on it, chesden yes yeah. like very like less than a foot of water big fish getting caught so it, it opens the lake up a little bit but the offshore stuff is kind of isolated and i could see how it could fish small if it was like fountainhead and there wasn't a lot of offshore structure and if you had 70 boats it'd be a problem i i love this specific question here and we'll get into the title stuff guys believe that but three thousand acres is not small because i had the two guys on from ohio and michigan and they were bitching at potomac angers like we fish a 300 acre lake with a 200 bfl like this is nirvana what is everyone's definition y'all's of a small body of water you said like the res and the res is 2000 ish acres 2200 like 20, i wouldn't yeah you're right it's not small but it's if you're talking full tournament size fields for BFLs, that's a small lake and it's going to mm -hmm. fish tight. We're just talking basically about a lake fishing tight, fishing small. But yeah, he's right. It's not a small lake. But to your point, you think the res fish is smaller because it's more of a concentrated offshore bite in the summertime versus Chesden this time. Correct. If we were pulling the same numbers that Chesden was pulling on Sunday tournaments, 30 to 40 boats, it would be... <laughs> It'd be pretty competitive fighting for spots, as, as I mean. Does that make it harder than when you're fishing the red? Now, I, I mean, for me, like the res fish is small because I just got a free controlling motor. But for you guys, and you can milk run that place, is does it still fish small this time of year in the, the John boat tournaments? Because there's how many boats the last couple of tournaments, by the way? 13 to 15. Okay. Right? That's how many yeah. I think that's right. Yeah. I mean, is it it's still fishing small. Like, I mean, just with competitors on top of each other. Okay. I feel like there's always holes that you can hit that are open that are close. Like you're not, uh, you might run to like one or two of your spots and be like, oh damn, there's someone sitting on it. But there's five more within a mile. Mm -hmm. Interesting. 
Yeah, and that rotation is so important. Um, and I guess it's different when you have a 250 on your back versus a 99, but getting into that rotation when you're dealing with that offshore bite. And, and that's, you two are both pretty decent with the scope. And there's this big push right now with with offshore versus, you know, bank beating tournaments. And you can see this with individuals like the Cox and Jordan Lee, where there was a good frog bite and they were able to do well really shallow. Is that something that you force this time of year when you're in the lakes versus going up shallow? Like um, McCluskey, you mentioned like a Chesden, there is a good shallow water bite. Well, is that something that you you felt like in your gut you should go do or did you just stick with the offshore stuff? Um, Just from past experience, I knew that you could catch fish in the grass there, but it was, I mean, it just seemed like there were specific things in the grass up shallow that they would bite the crap out of a frog. And I talked to a lot of people who were catching them flipping the grass, but I kind of noticed it with the thermocline when hmm. you're mid lake and up the thermocline is no deeper than like seven, eight feet of water and it's pretty stained. So there's, that's kind of a key. Like if you're going to find offshore stuff, it's going to be in five or six feet of water instead of 10 to 12, like it, like it is down Lake. So it kind of narrows it down and it's just, I like going shallow and throwing a frog sometimes too, man. <laughs> it's addicting. It's it's a lot of freaking fun. But um, that was my key, honestly, was just knowing like, okay, the water's dirtier. Let me just at least try this. And then luckily it pr showed itself pretty quickly that there was good ones up shallow. So I asked Kat who won the Potomac River Toyota series. Uh, allegedly, he ran down to Nanjimoin, I, I think is the thing. But the big takeaway with that was like he didn't turn his scope off when he was flipping, which is interesting because I have kind of in that strength. Like, so when I did well, I think I got second place at the Antietam Bassmaster event. I shut everything off because I was flipping spatter dock pads when they were spawning. Because in my gut, it's like I just wanted to get all that clicking crap out of there. I didn't want to make a lot of noise. But he said he felt there was an advantage that he could actually pan in there and see which branches actually had better. Like, out of curiosity, where do you guys both stand on that? I mean, I don't turn it off. It's It might be a good idea in some situations. I don't think that I've ever seen that. I always leave it on. But mm -hmm. I've seen enough fish, even shallow, on the Potomac fishing last year in the regional where I'm like, okay, there's fish sitting in this depression in the grass, like throw your chatterbait that way. Like I can clearly see like a group of them sitting there and like it didn't stop them from eating. So I'm just, I just like to see them. I like to see where they're at, where they're sitting. It's not so much like I'm scoping them and watching them bite the bait every single time, but it's like the ability even in shallow water to know where they're sitting and kind of mm -hmm. what they're sitting on or like what area of the water column or where at in the tree, you see movement. It, I think it does make a difference, even in two feet of water. That's something I've definitely failed at is not adapting to that when you had so many old timers beat into you, these old, I don't know, wives tales of, of how you're supposed to act. Now, I do agree with the stealth thing. I mean, I had the Texas Department of Wildlife Resources on, they did tests with cameras on spots where they would put cameras in the boat and then they'd take people with scope and stuff. And what they found out was it wasn't the scope that would spook fish off. It was just the pressure of the boats that these fish got so conditioned when a boat would go over top their place, they would disperse and then try to come back. And depending on how that boat approached it was how those fish would react, which is interesting to me if they're getting smart enough to know the way that boat approaches it, that they're probably going to get cast at, which is fascinating. Well, Matt, you've pointed some things out to me like that what do you mean <laughs> i'm reeling in a reeling in a bait and it's spooking fish off oh the the line thing with the yeah, yeah. The, if we yeah, yeah if you don't mind talking about it yes oh no not at all but i've it's really true it's i don't know if i noticed it like the last two years but this year definitely when the Demiki thing started to kick off for me when i was down in roanoke it was just <laughs> i noticed when you burn your bait in or even uh, even with the bait splashing, for example, but when you burn your bait in, like you can kind of, it's we use braid with leader for the spinning rods and whatnot, but you can hear the braid on your line. And it seems like when you burn a bait in, the fish will get spooked by just like, it, I don't know if they can hear it. 
mm-hmm. while you're reeling it in, or they can just feel the line coming through. But for some reason, I've started noticing it where like you'll, if you burn a bait before the fish is even noticed you're there like you could be perfectly still in the boat you just make a long cast and it's too far and you just burn it in to try and get it closer to them they'll spook from you just reeling it in hmm. so i don't know if there's anything to that but it's just something i've noticed especially I, I definitely agree once you pointed it out it was like oh my god i started noticing it like every every time i would burn the bait back to recast i'm like damn it where are they going <laughs> Yeah, it's I don't uh, they they can feel in the water so much better That's what than it is. I, I feel think like. they feel the vibration. Mm-hmm. But. I think it's I think the water like we I uh, Matt you and I, I I saw this when we fished the Veterans Day tournament last year where we were over thirty or forty feet of water it was gen freaking clear and every splash that you would do on the should have clued into this myself but they would come off the bottom to investigate and that's 30, 40 feet of water and they can see that shit I mean. I we don't give them enough credit when it comes to the distances that they can see a bait, whether it's with their lateral lines or with their eyes. And I think what a lot of older anglers that don't like the scope don't understand is this has shown you that you need to really approach those spots delicately. You can't run up on pad, make yep. your two cast. You got to drop down early and creep up to that spot bef- so you can actually make the presentation. So. If you guys would like in the comment section any more questions about lake fishing or things like that, I know there's a ton of comments that we'll get to eventually. Uh, I think this was a fascinating conversation because you two are definitely great with electronics and you've always been known. I, I, I could be wrong here, comment section, you know, let me know if I'm wrong. Deep, clear water guys that are really good. If you've ever been to the res, you know, you know. And you guys have had a lot more title tournaments. And I'm really fascinated to pick your brain about this since I really think my past is more of a river rat. Um, I don't even know how to start this. Like, who had the first like title tournament this year? I think it was you, know, you were uh, in North Carolina in some place that I can't pronounce, Okachoka Doki thing, wherever the hell that was for the elite teams. It, then you had the James River, then the Potomac, right? Yes. Yeah. So we were at Chowan. Cho- Chowan, Chowan, okay. Chowan, yeah, it's like the Albemarle <laughs> Sound. <laughs> it's the upper end of it, the Chowani. Okay. Uh, and that was like a very big version of the chick. Like, hmm. you could drop me in the backs of one of the creeks there and be like, oh, this is Chick, chick River. I'd be like, yep, makes sense. Just as far as like the grass and the cypress trees and just the way the style of fishing very similar color water like all of it is super super similar it's just 10 times the size it was huge how do you break that down we had one day of practice dude we were like where's the safest place we can go let's just go there and try not to die and see if we get bit and it i mean we caught fish in the areas that we checked out we're like all right that's what we're gonna do that's and neither of us had been there it was yeah but it worked i mean we had fun we were like, we were like a quarter pound out from cashing a check and we missed a bit like we had we were we had the bites to do really really well just missed one right at the boat but i i thought you did exceptionally well in that tournament and it's interesting that you have that reflection of a place that you've never been for title wise and then you have the james which is kind of a home water ish i guess for you and 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 hunter when you're practicing for that kind of event how how different is it when you've known that place for so long and there's not the same grass bite as the potomac is really known for where there's just grass everywhere i guess it depends where you want to fish like the james proper there's not as much grass as if you make the run down to the chick whereas like there's plenty of fish up in the james so this year i guess this is my third time fishing the bfls this summer uh, on the james and i'm like i'm not running to the chick i'm going to try to avoid it at all cost because everyone runs there it's an hour-long run it's a pretty i mean it's a pretty dangerous run to be honest with you if you're going an hour down also just even if i get my boat solid and running again like i don't want to run an hour away (laughs) i want to go catch I mean, you can absolutely win one in the game, like no doubt. The buddy that won the Elite 70 on the James, the one that we fished, he, I don't think he, 
really left far from Appomattox. Hmm. So there's winnable fish outside of the chick. And I don't, I just feel like getting more fishing time and like spent, it reduces so much of like what you need to fish in practice and like just being able to find things like that, I think would be easier by eliminating an hour run from your day or two hours actually there and back. Yep. How do you agree? How do you practice for the James versus her? Uh, I will say that I'm still struggling with that. <laughs> Wait, Maddie, what did you say? I didn't get no, it. I just laughed because it's just like a tidal body of water versus oh, yeah. a lake, and it's just right. the tides. There's so many variables. That's what I was gonna say. Like something I still struggle with is like the tides. So basically, when I go practice, I like write down when I caught a fish or pay mind to it and see where I'm at on the yeah. tide and be yeah. like, okay, so tomorrow I know I can fish this area an hour later. Or yeah, but even the then, if the wind's blowing out of a certain then direction, it's, right. it's completely wrong. It's right. like, oh, there's so many variables. It really is. It's so true. And it's crazy to think that like, when you start factoring in wind to it, like, mm -hmm. oh, the wind was blowing the water up into the river and like the tide didn't really get out enough for you to fish this or for your fish to get on this spot the way they mm -hmm. were when you caught them. So yeah, that like, it, like Matt's saying, there's just so many variables to it. It's, and that's why I think you see a lot of, you know, guys with more experience, like lifelong experience fishing tidal bodies of water do better yeah. no matter what, like, because they just have, everything kind of dialed in even if it is like okay the wind's blowing the water up into the river and we got a falling tide and yeah they just have all these different spots based on water level well it's when i fished the high school bass master the martial bass anglers way back in the day our, our, our fishing coaches said like if you want to get good at the potomac you pick a creek and you fish that creek all day through the tide swings and you'll know where those fish generally have it through the movement and then you pick another creek and another creek and then you'll have an idea of it sure. and now looking back on this like oh yeah that's great if you have 30 <laughs> years to do that but exactly. and yeah. that's where when you do that in a, in a day yeah like, like you can three days of practice yeah you can like you could be you could fish a spot with a school of 20 pound bass <laughs> on it and mm -hmm. if you're there an hour late you won't even get a bite yep that's very frustrating but and talking to like the Tyler Trents and stuff and some of the other big hitters at the Carolinas. And then you ask them like about title and they just, they get the shakes. Cause it's like, you can't <laughs> just graph. And, and, and that's not saying that that's a one's easier than the other, but the fact is you can on a lake graph around see marks and gen have an idea, but you can't always do that on the Potomac and make it work because of the tide swings. And I a hundred percent agree with you. But with that said, <laughs> <laughs> How do you formulate a game plan though? Because when the BFLs go there, the cats go there, you can't like, especially the elites, we're, we're, the elite 70s, where we're going to get into, you can't suck. So we try not to, but we'll get into that. But that's, yeah, that's more like it. We try not to. <laughs> It, it, how does your game plan go? Is it just picking an area and just sticking with it then? Is that what, was that what your thought was going into the Potomac? Just pick an area and just survive the event? Yeah, I mean, I've we ran so Dylan hadn't fished the Potomac. I think he fished it last year once, so he had like a day of practice and then fished the tournament. And he said their practice day they didn't catch any fish at all. Tournament day they had a limit in like the first thirty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so he was like, "Dude, whatever you want to check out, like that's cool. I'll show you where we caught him last year, and hopefully we can just figure something out." And, like ran out and fished some stuff that is just more than likely to straight community holes that I've fished in the past, and like did pretty well. And a couple things that I just stumbled upon and caught decent fish. And then obviously couldn't do any of that, but we still, uh, you know, caught some fish. We had like 10 and a half pounds or something trolling motor only and matter woman. But, um, yeah, it was you like, could have very well won that tournament though. Well, mm -hmm. that's what I was going to say. It's yeah. like, probably one of the better places to be locked into oh, for God, a yeah. full day there because they are there. It was just tough. There was also, so, I mean, I, I did ask Dylan this, like how many boats do you think are going to be in here tomorrow? Do you think it's going to be like everyone leaves or the majority of the field stays? And I'll tell you, 
Yeah, I know. <laughs> I should have known. I was like, well, maybe Dude. because everyone, like, not a ton of people in this oh. fish here. We, there were so we many folks in there, dude. Oh, we, we registered late for the battle series yesterday. Yeah. And we were like boat 35 out of 40 or something like that. And we just sat there and I just watched boats just go straight across, straight across, straight across, straight across. So it's like, God bless. Yep. It's, I mean, I get it. It makes sense. Yeah. There's two major places that tournaments go out of and they pull 100 boats mm -hmm. almost every other weekend. It's like, why would you not? And we caught them. Mm -hmm. Like we caught fish pretty much all day. Just could not get any big bites. Couldn't generate a big bite, but it was fun. Caught well, them that's a, yeah. caught flipping, caught them throwing a Senko chatterbait. Just nothing big. Well, and that's the problem with like, not the problem, but with Potomac, it's like just some creeks will pop off at different times. And we all know everyone, like the beach just has that section in the spring when it pops off and, if you're not down there, like you're not catching a good bag and then the, the pohick or that, it just, but that's what the weird part is. They don't all pop off usually at the same time. It's always sections that, that, that have that play to it. I just am still shocked that those stupid ass rocks at Leesylvania can be so freaking good. I mean, I get it. Like there's tournaments there, but it just mad a woman makes more sense than Leesylvania does. Honestly, just how it sets up, but it, is it was off it is. limits. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. Really? In the Elite 70, the rocks at Leeslevania are off limits. I thought it was kind of funny. Yeah. Every Potomac teams and Battle Series, all the tournaments that go out of Leeslevania for the most part are off limits. Hmm. So it's uh, just the BFLs that you're allowed to BFL. do that. Yeah. But one through five, see at the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> it's just ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, like I said, it makes total sense. I'm not knocking anybody for doing mm -hmm. it. I mean, I had a top, I think I finished third place in the BFL as a co angler inside the rocks in the grass and we pummeled them. We both mm -hmm. caught like 20 or 30 fish. It was insane. We got a guy named high pole, uh, one legged captain over there. Uh, he says the rocks in Lisa had never heard of them. Yeah. How? He's down at Lake Anna. He's fishing that deep water. <laughs> he did get out. I saw he posted. He was out on the boat this week. So, yeah, they made it handicap accessible. So huge shout out to you, Tyler. Glad you're feeling better. Um, so Matt, how did you venture off your home reservation of the res and venture into the marshy, shallow water of the, like how, why, I guess? Uh, you know, I started fishing on the river. Yeah, but like, okay. Not everyone watching does knows. though. I don't think <laughs> yeah. it does. Dude, I literally like my, when I first started fishing derbies, it was all Potomac River. Like that's the only place I fished, and that was before I had the job boat. Now it's the res, but no, I still fish the river. I mean, I I like the river a lot. It can be super fun, but it is just very frustrating for me sometimes. Like I don't like the sit in the grass bed and throw your wacky worm or throw your rattle trap around, and hopefully you catch two four pounders. Like that drives me nuts. Like there's so you're you're frustrated with not because you can't figure it out, but you have figured it out, and you think it's just bo it's. It's, it's not, not as fun. It's not as fun. I mean, I won't say it's not as fun because you catch a bunch of fish, but I you just like I the game. Like, I like, I don't know. I think it, I personally believe it takes more skill to run around to different spots and I, run the tide. I just than, said that. I, yeah, okay. I just, I've been in the boat with you one time and you like the Rubik's cube of it. You mm -hmm. really don't like catching fish. You like the Rubik's cube. <laughs> and I'm <laughs> sorry. Like, oh, I like catching fish. Oh yeah, but I, like, I the Potomac is simple jack. As long as they're book. over five pounds, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I hate the river. There's no five pounders in it. No. Um yeah, I got yeah, that's that's true. Like Saturday, the cat tournament, I fished with Bob Petty and it launched out of Aquaya. And Did we you went fish with Bob Petty? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was so fun. We had a blast. That's a legend right there. You just slowly just drop that in there. Damn, dude, that's cool. Wow. It was great going to the boat because he's really close with my Potomac team's partner, Chris Silberti, and Bob and I have gotten pretty close. We call, I talked to him pretty regularly, but um, I called him on, I think it was Thursday or Friday, maybe. No, I think it was Thursday, and we were just shooting the shit, and Chris was out of town, and I was like, I might fish the cat tournament on Saturday. I was like, do you want to fish? He's like, let me talk to my wife. I was like, all right, sweet. I guess we're fishing the tournament together. But it was it was a blast. I think I think he had a really good time too because he said it was like the second tournament in the last fifteen years that he's fished that Dude. wasn't his own tournament. So That's it was cool. cool seeing everybody walk up to him. It felt good fishing with him. 
I didn't but, mean to derail it, but that, that's no, that's no, cool. it's fine. I just, no, it needed to be mentioned. But um, I we went to a place and we were fishing a spot. Alex and I fished like two weeks prior. I had never seen it before, and we went there. And Bob was like, "Well, I haven't fished this spot." I was like, "We're going there." Just because, I mean, he's been fishing the river for so long and he said we, he hasn't seen the place. I'm like, oh, yeah, we're definitely going to go back, go back there to where <laughs> I don't want to say where it is. But um, and we went back there and caught some really nice fish and we finished second in the tournament. And it was it was it was a good time. But that being said, with the Rubik's Cube thing on or yesterday on the river battle, I fished with Chris and Chris is like, why aren't we going back to that spot? I was like, because I don't want to. I was like, we're going to mm -hmm. go catch it somewhere else. And we ended up doing, we went to a different spot in the morning. And in the first two hours, we absolutely destroyed them. We had our almost, almost our whole bag. And then we ran, we made a long run. And then I ended up calling one time and I had two fish on the frog that would have sealed the deal, but just didn't get, didn't get in the boat. But Shane and Marshall Majeski won the river battle tournament yesterday. And a cool story there one of their buddies broke down and we were fishing our last last spot we actually saw them two boats just getting towed back to Leesylvania and they told us they got a call can you come pick us up and they were like yeah okay but they told them they were one fish away they had like a one and a half pounder in their bag and they had two four plus pounders and they hang up the phone they're getting ready to leave and go tow the guy back and the guy calls them and it's like hey you guys are one fish away just keep fishing so they they had already left the spot they did a one they did a 180 go right back to the spot and on this Marshall's last cast he caught big fish of the tournament it was a four eight and they won the tournament so yeah that's crazy they took a whole bunch of money home it was awesome we they they run the Wednesday nighter or sub Pohick and they're they're good dudes I was happy yeah if you guys would like to come on the show uh Ed and I are trying <laughs> to get somebody on from the Battle of the Border series I've reached out to every winner this year so far and no one wants to to be the first for the Battle of the Border series so I will keep trying. I'll talk to him on Wednesday uh, night. And well, I guess why they, I guess quite where would is the quiet easier for you to get to than the T uh, Leesylvania? Which is closer for you? Leesylvania for me. Leesylvania for you. Mm -hmm. And then, and then Matt is it? Uh, yeah, it's quiet because you're in Richmond. That makes sense. It's quiet, but I don't even know how. Like it may not even be that much of a difference. It's like plus 15, 20 minutes, probably twenty because you got to go off the exit a good ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Matt, from from you, SB, um, the Potomac, it, it's weird. In our when we talk about the group chat, and it's such an interesting thing. I think it was Smith uh Smith. Hunter said something very poignant, which was, you know, why would I leave the James to go to the Potomac? And yeah, Hunter, I'm gonna say you said something poignant for once. Um <laughs> that's interesting because when as a James River guy, like, is there a reason? if you just don't fish tournaments, but you just like fishing, is there a reason to come up to the Potomac, honestly? And how different is it from your experiences on the James River? I mean, is I think your chances of catching bigger fish are obviously down here. I think getting the experience of the upper Chickahominy River, you're not going to find on the Potomac River. Um, like the very backwaters with the, with cypress trees, it, which is such a cool thing to see, just like mm -hmm. fishing aside. Like it is very, very neat. Those very like back end creeks and like full of grass and cypress trees. It's, it's very different. Um, unless I, I don't know of any cypress trees on the Potomac. Maddie, you got any? Don't hit? think uh, so. <laughs> there's one stretch in Dogue Creek right before you get to the bridge. There is some cypress trees and I'm not sure if they're the same kind of cypress trees that are down there, but I, I'm right. sure there's a few other creeks and stuff that have that same kind of tree that's in the back of Dogue, but yeah. And it's, there's maybe like two feet of it that's actually in the water. So it's like, <laughs> right. So <laughs> like legitimately be fishing deep cypress trees in the back of creeks that like, looks like you're down in Louisiana or something. Mm -hmm. It's super cool. It's very unique. Um, I think that, yeah, again, your chances of catching a bigger fish are going to be down here, but the Potomac has been fishing great. Like I've been keeping up with tournament weights and obviously seeing Maddie crush and dude, they're, I mean, you're catching almost 20 pounds the last what two derbies. And it's, it's insane. And this really? is something that was brought up at the black bass advisory committee. Cause people on the board was talking about how 
the way the river was. I was like, guys, listen, if you take away the co-anglers for the Costa, those weights are even better. Like it was insane with the fish being split, the weights that we're putting up <clears> there. And it's just, it's fishing deep too. It's not just a 30 pound bag and then everyone's catching 10, like the upper bay. It, it, it is, it, it's fishing really good. Um, so, uh, we now have joining us, uh, your son, uh, that's why. Oh, I see. Ah, we're just doing talking great. about you. Yeah, I heard the James River talk. I had to jump on here. Mm -hmm. Set you boys straight. So what's the deal? On the James River? Yeah. Yeah, we actually yeah, you're, catch, yes. We actually catch fish there. Unlike <laughs> you guys. <laughs> so do you think it's easier to be a James River angler and then try to fish the Potomac, or is it easier to be a Potomac River angler and try to fish the James? I think it's easier to be Potomac and come to the James. Because how many times no has the team? I'm oh. just saying. I think that when you go to the Potomac, there's stuff that you would never find on the James. But then it's the going to be like it's going to be like easier to figure out if that makes sense. Like we're not fishing like grass mats out in the middle of the river. All our grass mats are pushed up near the shore where you can find other stuff. So. I think it's easier to adapt coming to the James and it's just way better than the Potomac. I, I think that the problem is with the Potomac, there is so much grass that the hardcover crap gets overlooked. Um, because it's just so easy just to be a magnet and go straight to the grass. If you look at a lot of the old guys, I think it was Chris Johnson that says something so cool. Like a piece of concrete is a piece of concrete. It's not moving once you waypoint it. There's truth to that. And I think James anglers are just so used to like that sequoia tree or cypress, whatever the hell it's called. It's not moving. And once I find a couple of good ones, it's fine. Every year, if you're a grass guy, you basically have to rediscover the juice on the grass if you want to go that route. Yeah. And this, I will say this year, um, it's the most grass I've ever seen on the, on the James, like Chickahominy area. Like the grass came in in like June. And it just gets thicker by the day. Like I've had Dude, to fish so much more mats that I've ever had to fish before. I don't think it ever fully died off. Because no, like I, in, that, I remember yeah. being out there in like April and like yep. holy shit, there's there's yeah. grass here already. Like I just well, don't think it got cold enough to kill it. Mm -hmm. So there's yeah. like an abundance of grass this year. Yeah, like I have a I have a stretch of pads that I fish every year. And I it's just gone this year and it got all taken up by high hydrilla mats and i pretty much like fish off a little bit there's like no pads there it's, it's insane yeah and i've always thought like would pads be considered grass or hard cover i i in my mind think spatter dock and, and lily pads are more like hard cover because i know where they're going to be in like aquaquan I know where they're going to be. They're going to come up every year. It's very much a consistency thing versus milfoil, coontail, hydrilla. That shit, it does move around. And in, and every year you have to find where the mix is, where the, the, the thick mats are. And that is a skill set in of itself. And unlike, I know there are some Potomac anglers that disagree with this. That's why the Florida guys come up here and win three years in a row the coast is i think part of it is they look at it differently but they can just recognize grass too i mean there, there's got to be something in the water there to where three years in a row they've won the exact same damn tournament that's pretty impressive they're the best grass fishermen they know mm -hmm. exactly what to look for and i, I haven't mm -hmm. i'm not the one to tell you what that is but they can tell the difference in where the fish are biting and like they can run around and find more of it and duplicate it better than mm -hmm. someone like me, but they're, I mean, that's what they've been doing. Like literally every single place I ever fished in Florida has more types of grasses than I ever fished. Connor, what do you think about that? Gotta be honest. Didn't hear a word you guys said. <laughs> My uh, phone cut out during that, during that whole thing. <laughs> I'm sure what you guys said was really good though. Thomas said Potomac fishermen suck at fishing grass and all the Florida guys are way better. Yeah, oh, I basically. Agree. I cannot wait for those I, comments and hate mail to come in again. <laughs> well, here's the, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Someone that grows up punching or fishing Potomac grass 
is just always going to get smoked by someone that fishes Florida grass because they just have to go through so many different types. Potomac, you got one. Or I don't know. I don't even know if that's true. You honestly. don't just have one. But there's a few. Yeah, I knew I was lying on that one. But Florida is just so diverse and you just you could drive one mile and you're fishing completely different grass than you were. And it's crazy. But I think, yeah, I think Florida guys are just so much better at punching grass. And you guys can at me all you want. And before I just get ahead of the comments, Todd, uh, your episode will be dropping next week. Todd will be defending Potomac River punching anglers. Um, oh, and, uh, so, great. Yeah, we did record an episode, and I just I didn't drop it. But yeah, it was a good episode. He he definitely uh, lays the wood into me some about my takes and stuff. So it's it's a really fun episode. Oh, I can't wait. That's awesome. It's gonna be a good one. Um, it's so interesting with the hardcover stuff because the other thing is too, I think the, I've only been to the James one time in my life, which is a fault of mine. The current rips, there are a lot harder than the Potomac. It's definitely more, it, it will, when it runs, it runs hard in a lot of places compared to the Potomac. I feel like. Yeah. Hunter, what do you think? Yeah, I agree. It's, it depends on. So like right now we have a, extremely low water like probably some of the lowest water i've seen in a long time and the current is ripping harder than i've ever seen it as well so i think that goes hand in hand it just depends on like i think when the water's up and i could be completely wrong but i think when the water's up it's a slower flow and when it's low it's going to go a lot faster so i think it, it fluctuates but yeah it definitely kicks a lot it kicks pretty hard how far down on the james can you actually catch them because of the farther, solar intrusion and stuff. Way farther than you would think. It's not. Well, that narrows it down. Like you could probably run, I would say 30 or 40 minutes down from the chick and run into a bass. Mm. That's a long, that's like in the bay. That it, is it, in the bay. That is literally in the bay. Yeah, I know guys that have run down there in tournaments. And I mean, I know Becker's the other day caught a bass that spit up a flounder. Nice. Because <laughs> I, I've had friends catch him in the uh, upper Mockadoc Creek and Port Tobacco. And, and and I asked him, it's like, well, why'd you tell me? He's like, who the hell in their right mind would run down there? And I was like, that's actually a good point. Like, okay, well, yeah. <laughs> See you there next weekend. Because, <laughs> <Yep. laughs> yeah, that, 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 that is an insane run. I mean, the, the Chickahominy, though, like, uh, Hunter, before you probably were listening because Matt was talking about, like, when you'd want to run down to the chick and i guess the chick would make sense because there's so many f1 stock there and i guess it really comes down allegedly. to if you're allegedly what? allegedly, allegedly. Wow. that's a whole other conversation <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but um i guess it depends if it's a, a one day or a multi-day because i think if you're going to run to nanjamoin or port tobacco a one day or is it really worth it versus three when you actually need some separation in the field like and i think that's a big thought process that goes into it. And again, that's why I think Florida anglers do so well here is they only come up here for three days. So their, their mindset is I can't just fish here where I'm separating fish for three days. It might not catch 20 pounds each day at port tobacco, but I get them all to myself for three days straight. I'll win it. Or you can find a big wad of big fish for a one day event somewhere really far away from the launch and win the one day. True. Now are you talking for one days? Yeah. You literally just swing for the fence. Every there's no tomorrow. <laughs> like you literally exactly. have to. Like I, I feel like a grass bed would be better for a multi-day event. Like, okay, I'm True. gonna get my 15 pounds. I could chill and try some new stuff or 15 to 18 pounds, whatever <laughs> that is for the river. And I can come back here tomorrow and have the same tide and catch them the same way but i feel like a one-day event if you're just say you send it up to the spoils like i'm going up there for 20 pounds basically i want to win i mean that's how oh go ahead no i was done sorry you mentioned it with spoils i think dc is so untapped because of the retarded fishing license rules and i almost got shot by the coast guard because i blew through there at 100 miles an hour so that's another story but up there, D DC and stuff, I think there's a lot of fish that people don't touch because it's just the hassle of it. I wonder how much that actually protects it fishing pressure wise. Because, you're like, do you really want to get a DC license if you're fishing at BFL or Acosta? It's like, nah, I just won't do it. 
but not that much. It's really it's like online now too. It's like yeah, it's, pretty, it's easy to get the license. I I think there's honestly think there's not as many fish up there. I, there I, once that grass I, died up north. True. This is what I hear from all the guys true. that fish Potomac teams, all the older guys, my partner. Hmm. It was paradise up by the yep. 495 bridge mm-hmm. 15 years ago oh. or however long it was. Uncle Jack talks about football fields of hydrilla out in the middle that he would yep. just like get on the edge and like just fish that all day and catch like that real ball. men. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. And it's, it's gone. So it's like, yeah, that maybe when that grass first left, those fish were like, kind of like, holy shit, where do I go? And then they went to the hard structure up there. But I feel like over time, those fish have just moved away. Like it is such a grass fishery now. Like they want to be in the grass. <clears throat> I think in the DC Harbor near the wharf, there's 30 pounds in those docks. I think sure. there might only be five, but it, yeah, it uh, might be. No, there's some, there are some big fish up there for sure. Yeah, I'm sure. But it's just like you it's said, the hassle. Be, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's going to be, and you better know how to, how to run it, like where you're going. Yeah. Yeah. Cause um, there is some sketchy shit up there. And they don't mess around there, by the way, guys, especially with the 9-11 and the assassination attempts. You got to be very careful, like, uh, yeah, how you run. Uh, I used to see a boat line up there on the grass flat across from Woodrow Wilson. Yeah, like, I remember that, too, when I was a kid. Um, there used to be a lot of grass up there, and it is now gone. Uh, we got we got high pole again. We got biggest bass ever caught in the Potomac was right next to Reagan Airport, but the number of bites can be rough. Uh, yeah, D.C. lower units. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Um, Hunter, since since you are allegedly a, a good little stick on the James River, when you're fishing there, is it primarily a shad, crab, crayfish? Like, what is the primary forage in that part of the river? Um, crab definitely plays. I, I don't know if I'd call it primary, but there's a lot of throwing, you know, blue colors and and stuff like that. Um a ton of crawfish, a lot of shad. That'd probably be the biggest three, I would say. Yeah, a lot of like, I think it's the blueback herring or the gizzard shad, one of them. I don't know my shad. Ton of well. gizzard shads. Ton of gizzard yeah. shads. Um, you got the skipjack. You got, we got the shad runs. Like, I think that's when Brandon Polinick did the big thing with the mag draft was in the spring when the shad were running up the chick to the dam and you had that big push. So that's definitely There's a no seasonal fish option. Uh, not at all. Nope. They're all Maddie the and lake. I fished. A, Maddie and I fished a, um, a day. When was that? Which Matt? Maddie? Two SB. Matt McCluskey's never invited me yet, but me and SB, we fished like a little one, little two v two, and we caught fish all day. Probably caught 15, 20 fish, all on chatterbaits and jigs. Matt was throwing pumpkin and sapphire and catch them on jig. But when we got back, my live well was – you could barely see the bottom of the live well. There was so many crawfish in there. Like I had mm. to get a shot back and to get them out. It was insane. But they – like so once cool. like late summer into fall, the crawfish, there's so many of them, and they're all eating them. Hmm. That's really cool. That's how it is on the Potomac, too. They also get black and red. Like, they get some weird-ass colors. Like, I really wish I knew yeah. why that would happen so you could actually plan ahead. But, yeah, it, it, that's that's weird. That is weird. Crap, I had a thought, and it just left my brain. This is why you don't do drugs. Um, yep. Where was it going with that? Yes, so when it comes to the both places... You mentioned the chatterbait about just slinging a chatterbait. And I keep saying this because I, for the first time in my life, caught fish in a tournament on a chatterbait. They were smallmouth on the Shenandoah. But it's the first time I really use a chatterbait in a tournament because I keep telling myself like a retard, eventually that bite's going to go away because every single person throws a chatterbait on the river. And I really stick with the swim jig because I feel like it's way more versatile and I just have more confidence in it in a lot of situations. Where are, are you three river anglers on the chatterbait versus swim jig debate? Allegedly, someone caught a seven and a half on a chatterbait recently. Allegedly. <laughs> Who? No, they 
absolutely smack a chatterbait. I don't think it matters how many people throw them. I've been throwing them for five years, and every year it gets better and better. And I, when I throw a swim jig, it's usually like in a bunch of pads and like kind of doing the little Alabama shake deal and having them come up for it. But yeah, chatterbait is unreal on the river. SB. I mean, I'll lean generally more towards the chatterbait, but I can see why a swim jig is potentially more effective and will get you more bites that a chatterbait doesn't because the majority of people fishing are throwing a, a chatterbait. I think there's less people throwing a swim jig. So it's a little bit more quiet. I guess you can say more finesse. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I think the fish that are going to eat a chatterbait or swim jig. Uh, it's so reactionary that like they're gonna eat it, whichever one you're throwing, a lot of the time. But like, I want to know, Maddie, what do you think? I, I like this. I prefer, I I prefer a swim jig over the chatterbait, hundred percent. I just I don't know. I I like to do the Alabama shake thing that Hunter was talking about, and I don't. I I still throw the chatterbait. But for me, it's the dirtier water thing on the river. If it's dirty, I like the chatterbait over the swim jig, but sometimes the swim jig still works great in dirty water too. But I don't know. I feel like Matt said you can kind of, it's just more finessey than the chatterbait. And it's not even something I want to call finessey. It's just like, yeah, it's it, just less it's intrusive. Power fishing. Wow. Like it, it's, it's power fishing, just not. It's less versatile. It's, it's quieter, quieter than a chatterbait. Like it's slightly more stealth. Yeah. It's I mean, yeah. they both work. They both work. Throw it on, throw it on eighteen pound test or braid. It's a lot less versatile, in my opinion. Um, it, it, I I can throw that thing on a super light light line on a clear lake, and I can just treat it like a, a swim bait and bump bottom, and you know they can shark it, or I can throw you know an ounce, which I have too, and just smash through spatter dock. You can do so, or you know you can do the whole scope thing with it and make it really small and finessey and fish it like literally a crappie jig. Like there's so many things that I feel like you can do with that you can't do with the chatterbait. Plus it's just more weedless. Like bar none, I can throw a swim jig in places that you cannot get a chatterbait back uh you know and so that's also another fact to it as well um i don't know i feel like i feel more with it too it, it sounds weird but when i throw a chatterbait i don't feel like i understand the grass as much as when i'm throwing a swim jig i can feel the different types of grass and so sleeters lake right now there's still like i don't it's like almost like milfoil but there's also this stringy shit and in kayak events I've had, when I'm fishing the deep stuff and I don't have scope on my boat, when I throw a chatterbait, I just get clumped and I can't really feel it until I screw and until I tear it out. With the swim jig, I can feel the difference in the grasses and know like this is the stuff I actually want to be in, and I can approach it accordingly. And I think that's a very big factor to it, at least personally for me. The next big thing is color, because it is interesting that red plays so freaking well. Is that something that you feel like is just a springtime thing or do you kind of keep those really standard tidal water colors year round and that's open to anybody that wants to talk about it i mean i just it's just tidal river colors i mean there's certain colors that work real good on tidal rivers whether it's spring summer fall i mean it's water clarity dependent i mean it just depends but there are certain colors that get a bit better than others. Why do you think that? I don't know if they see it better, they react to it better, if it's matching the hatch, I'm not sure. How important is matching the hatch for a largemouth versus smallmouth? Because personally, as a as a smallmouth guy, I think it's way more important for smallies than largies. I just feel like smallmouth are more of a sight feeder and they will key in on larvae and if it's not black and it looks like it they're just like this is not my bite I and mean, for god's sakes no one minor one on a freaking like top water spider bug and it's because he figured out that that's exactly what they were keying in on and they would stare at that shit. and if it didn't look like it they wouldn't go after it hunter yep no i agree with you um <laughs> You what? Yeah, I think I think largemouth are dumb. Don't jinx it. 
What happened? <laughs> nothing, no. nothing, nothing. I just need that clip for later. Thank you. Damn it. Didn't even think about that. <laughs> um, no, I think largemouth are stupid. That's what I think. And I think smallmouth care more about matching the hatch. I throw, I throw have one color that I've been throwing in the trick for years. Never switched it. Oh, I'm talking about chatterbaits and stuff. And I know Matt took that same color, the Potomac, and wrecked them last year. So, I don't know. I don't pay too much. I usually am big on, I find one thing that works, and I milk it until it stops working. So, that one hasn't stopped working. Can you please say larvae and a little bit slower in a French accent? <laughs> Christ. I don't even know what a French accent I was laughing sounds like. At that before you popped it up there, I like yeah. looked over at the comment section. I was thought that was hilarious. Uh, larvae, larvae, something like that. Yeah, I can't, dude. I can't even speak English half the time. I mean, this is the best I've actually read comments. So come Baku? on, guys, give, give me some slack. Yeah, Baku, dude, that should have been a shirt. I'm telling you, do not drink before you start reading. Hunter, as a James River local. How do you actually keep it, keep your mind clear and not fall under the ruts of fishing the same old, same old? And, and I guess I can compare and contrast, let's say, the two mats that probably have 10,000 waypoints of the res, all, let's say, brush piles. They have a thought process going into that, and it can very easily get to be burnout of, I'm just doing the same thing, throwing uh, of stick bait because it works, and I'm going to keep doing that which is hard on lakes because you have to constantly adjust. Do you feel like on title, you have to make as many adjustments, so to speak to that? Yes and no. I'm not, I don't really leave. I think I fish a lot of the same stuff on the river. Actually, r these last couple of weeks have been the most that I've like kind of explored stuff and, and looked at stuff a little bit different. Um, and I've been catching a lot of fish, but yeah, I think, I think there's just so much on the James that like this week I ran some stuff on the James and ended up catching them really good that it's hard to really get complacent. Uh, um, but there's also stuff that I've fished since I started fishing the chick that I still catch a ton of big fish on. So, but yeah, you definitely have to be versatile and not get stuck running same stuff that you caught them on a low tide three years ago and stuff like that. I got another question because people are just loving the hunter. Uh, question for Hunter: Do you think because yep. it's most of the tournaments uh, go out of how much have you been drinking, Billy? My goodness, tournaments go out of Osborne, but the James River is slipping where most fish are. Yep, Hunter. So I've got like a theory that, um, and shout out my boy BK. Um, but I've got a theory that every probably two years that it changes from a chick year to a James river year. Um, mm -hmm. just cause on placement and ever and all the locals know like where they're going to go. So like, like the last couple years have definitely been James river years. And, um, even guys that put in at route five will run up, run up to Osborne and bring fish back. And then this year I think is definitely a chick year. year. Um, but yeah, I think that every couple years it definitely, I mean the fish, they get moved so far. Like there's probably not a ton of fisheries where a fish is getting moved 60 miles in a day. Like it's insane. So I think definitely that that is a big having a lot of effects on our on our fishery. But I don't know. It's very we need some more stocking. That's what we need, Thomas. They really need to continue to to, to crank that up. Um, yeah. The Potomac River is definitely struggling with that. I know that the state won't do F1 stocking, but they said you're allowed to do it, which is kind of nice. Um, but no, they need a lot. They, they're, they're stocking living shit out of Smith and Lake Anna, though, which is insane because I do think a 30 pound bag in a BFL is going to come out of Smith at some point. It's just, it's creeping that way. It's like 27, 28 pounds the last That's two so years, something like that. Did. 100%. Yeah. Like, I, and, and out of all our I bodies think that of water, hard... go for it, Hunter. Yeah, and our and our tournaments have so like, like last year we had. We had a, a college tournament that had like almost three hundred boats, That's and so and I hate to break it to you guys, those release boats they're not going as far as you think they're going. They're mm -hmm. going out of sight and they're dumping those. They're going out of sight and dumping those. Yeah, for I, sure. 
I'm oh, we're taking them back to the level. chick. Like, are you going to take sorry that to burst, boat 45 miles down the James? <laughs> sorry to burst your bubble, but that pontoon is driving about a mile and dumping 400 fish up in Osborne. But yeah, so it, it definitely gets crazy. Like opens and college tournaments, like they're bringing, I don't even know what the numbers are, but probably close to a thousand fish up, up from the chick over that course of the tournament. I think it's interesting when it comes to the mindset of an angler. And I've always thought to myself, if I would have rather been born here or like in the Carolinas, and I really wish it was the Carolinas. Cause I think that mindset transfers a lot more places. If you are a river rat and this is there's, they're good anglers. I'm just saying like, I feel like you're at a, a big picture. I think it's a detriment to just live on the river because the mindset and how you practice, and how you do things, so much of that crap doesn't trans like translate to the TVA system, you know, blue back lakes, that mindset of I'm going to hit 200 bu brush piles in a day to cast and move. That's a, that's, that's the antithesis of power pole down in a grass place and, and, and hit a chatterbait, which works. Um, it's just, and so I'm kind of getting to your point there, Hunter, where, yeah, they dump all this fish at Osborne, you power pole down at the rocks and you just keep making that cast for eight hours and you're going to do good. And, there are anglers I've talked to on this show. They're like, I would rather put a gun to my head than have to do that all day, even though it's what's going to win. Cause I, I just didn't do that. Yep. Sometimes I'd rather just donate my money than sit in the grass bed all day. Just like, I know I'm not going to win, but I'm going to run around and try. <laughs> I'm going to try. <laughs> And then with me just completely just steamrolling my whole argument, then you see Jacob Wheeler and all these guys show up in the MLF and they're fishing brush piles with jerk baits. Like is but I don't think people are gonna do that because the anglers that fish the tidal rivers are so set in their ways. I don't see them fishing that style necess a lot of them, let's just say. I mean, think about it. It's like you got your typical river fishermen. How much do you think that they're live scoping? Zero. Close they're not live they're not live scoping but they're fishing brush piles i don't think they're live scoping well i think that's the big the key there they're not live scoping well and was jacob and, wheeler catching them in brush piles live scoping on the chick yeah huh yeah i was gonna say hunter you're in the boat with him so how many river guys locals are gonna do that besides hunter zero <laughs> no zero. i'm you guys would your mind would be blown if you knew how many guys spend their day running brush piles but they're not they're not scoping or anything it's brush piles that they put out oh. that they are running like it's yeah. they're not scoping yeah. but to your but point, also it's like kind of different too because that's a thing that you know dudes will drop in the very back of a creek in front of a stake bed that they're like okay i'm going to use this as a uh yeah. marker and i know that my brush piles right here and hopefully fish have loaded up on it well, I remember a couple of years ago when the grass was bad at Matta Woman and I started fishing Matta Woman like a lake and just fishing points and, and hard stuff and you can catch them still. And that's basically what happens with some of these pros is with the scope. They're so good at it. They're just fishing it like a damn lake. I mean, you got to factor in tide and crap, but I mean, you know, there's a guy above you that he's caught one or two with the scope. What are his thoughts on all that? Me? <laughs> what? <laughs> Um, I mean, doing what's going to make them a hundred thousand dollars. It's just how you win. It's, I mean, I've scoped plenty of fish on the Potomac river doing that, but it's just, I don't have enough places to go do that. Nor do I feel like it's the way to win, but clearly on the James, it was really, it's also different in the sense that they're like every pound and a half or yeah, every pound and mm -hmm. a half pro counts. So it's not like, all right, go catch your biggest five over the next three, four days. It's get to the final day and hopefully you can get it. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see the statistics from when they came there on like the quality of the fish that were getting caught by the guys scoping on the trees compared to the guys who like Nick LeBrun, who was up throwing Just, a choppo or whatever, whopper yeah. plopper up yeah. against the cypress trees. Yeah. I mean, there wasn't a ton of big point. fish caught. Oh, he was yeah. dude he'd have like 70 pounds to second place is 40 
mm-hmm. yeah. 35 or something. It was nuts. He like doubled well, the weight the first day. And like second MLF day. was here. M- the uh, Invitationals, I guess, is what they're called now. They were here two years ago, and that was five fish. And there was a lot more four, five, six, sevens caught in that tournament than there was this one. But it's just it's just the way that they're fishing. I mean, they're fishing to win that that yep. style. So I don't blame them. No, yeah, For sure. uh, th- yeah, gotcha. different style. Oh, this is a good question. This is something we're gonna get to here. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> And Hunter, maybe you could lead the charge with this. Will Brown, uh, any stories or thoughts on the MLF event? Like just in general? Do you have a story in your head? Do I have a story? That won't get me demonetized or the channel. Uh, gotta, <laughs> you gotta lead me to something. I got I got nothing on the dome right now. Okay, so with MLF event, what were some key takeaways from that big tournament that Skeet Reese won that you were there for that blew up the chat for a week straight? I'll say my personal takeaway and what I learned, I think I texted Strykel about this, is how lazy I am when I fish that place. Like the amount of, like, I don't even know how to, the, how hard that they fish. Cause like I can see, I knew every area that they were fishing like how hard they're fish and the stuff that they were fishing that I've never thought to fish. Mm. It, it, and don't get me started on how the locals are acting, but it, it's oh, wait, like, they were going to, they would have won. <laughs> Matt, you're going to get me in trouble. They, those, those boys, they're, they're different. I don't, oh, I don't they, care they what you think. Those boys are different. Um, they're wow. on other levels than, than we are. And it was, it on a river that I've fished, you know, probably average two or three days a week for the last five years. I was I was thoroughly impressed with how many fish they were catching, and the areas that they found in their in their two days of practice. How many pros hit you up for waypoints, Hunter? None, none. Don't which lie. hurt. Which hurt a little bit, honestly. I would have kept my mouth shut. <laughs> They know for next year. It's all good. Yeah, they know. They know. They call on somebody. Uh, which, I mean, that can get into a whole other argument there. But, I mean, it, I think that's perfectly. You, you got to. There's no I way you can survive. No. Yeah. Why not? No, I agree. I agree. Yeah, like, it's fine. Like, it. You sh- Like, first off, from a regulation standpoint, you can't control it. So, don't even try. Like, then how the hell are you going to tell people not... How do you tell you people they're not allowed to talk polygraph. to each other? You give them a polygraph, and if they fail it, they're disqualified. They can fake a polygraph. You put a tack Dude, up your ass I, or something. Oh my gosh, no! I'm I'm I not with that. Ass, Thomas. Really? Like, how would you know? I don't think so. Maybe you're right. You're right. <laughs> no, you put it in your shoe. That's what it is. Wait, apparently. what? Your what shoe. did you say? McCluskey you put said, a tack. "Yeah." You put a tack in your it's shoe, ready. allegedly. Oh, yeah. And you know, stick yeah. it in your foot. And you can pass a polygraph. Or you can put a penny in your mouth. No, dude. I ain't doing that. It, 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 it needs to be cut and dry. If you fail a polygraph test, you are disqualified. Don't fuck around. Don't play games. Like, there's nothing Maddie, to it. That's what I do love about you. You're like... I, it's a, it pisses me it. off. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. I don't like it. I just like, don't think it should be a rule. I, I mean, if you look at it, they fine. Want. Don't make it a rule. Everybody can call everybody, but it's in the sure. rules. If you get information, I do agree. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, you're right. You're right. So Sorry. you would prefer uh, that to happen? For what to happen? <laughs> to actually just put a no information rule across the board, zip tie it. I mean, at the highest level, sure. I mean, if that's what they want yeah. to do, I don't care what they do, but. They're not allowed to do it. It's in the rules. It's a good point. What do you think about? Oh, go for it, SP. I was going to say, you know what? You know what happens? Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, I'll just pay the fine. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, no. I I mean, there's just no consequences for it in a certain tournament trail. It seems so. I think you got to hold the trail accountable on that one. I think, but yeah, who, I but who holds that. them accountable? No one, right? Now. I feel like I feel like nobody's watching their stuff, anyways. So, 
I don't think anyone's watching Bass, honestly. I don't think anyone's watching MLF. I think it's it's hard when they come out and say, like, listen, we have checked our own numbers and this is what, what we think our numbers are. Every time they have a, a new event, it's the biggest numbers they've ever gotten, though. Yeah. yeah. Bassmaster's exploding. Yeah, based on what they say. Like yeah. I, I'm just I, I'm just saying, like, this is what I wish they would do. ML, FLW used to do this. They put it on YouTube. Guess what? I mean, that should at least we'd see all the views. But this weird thing of like them coming out with our numbers that this is the biggest thing ever. Like, how could it sounds like Disney Plus saying, "Hey, this new lesbian witch show we have, it's the greatest thing ever. Look at the numbers that we made." It's like how if it was just one time that would make sense, but when it's every. <laughs> I'm sorry, you got me with that one. The lesbian witch show. <laughs> yeah, oh, I was the acolyte or whatever it is. Oh, anyway, I know, <laughs> but but it's it, no hunter. It's not that. That's a different channel. But um, God damn it, Hunter, you made me lose my thoughts. Anyway, yeah, I remember my thought. But it, when it was not just one event, it's one. if it was just one event that they say like it's the best numbers, it's great. But when it's like every event's getting better numbers, I'm just a little bit more sus of that. Of like, how the hell are you having the greatest year ever blowing everything out of the water consistently? It Maybe it is, 100%. Or like every other corporation does, they fudge shit. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. But if it is, to your point, it's the best numbers ever, it's because of the live scope. Because mm -hmm. they're catching massive bags. Because the this is this is what yeah. I've said on everyone's show. The or deal of the devil is they're streaming it across every platform that they possibly can. Which I don't think they're, they're not. never doing before. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's on YouTube, too. it's on Facebook, it's on Instagram, it's on Fox, Fox Sports, Sports, it's on literally like eight different networks of you know, an area people can go watch, whereas in the past it's on one. So that yeah. did hurt them. I will 100% agree with that. I not gonna lie. I don't all I don't have Fox Sports. So I have to go to someone's house to actually watch it on, which is annoying as absolute hell. I mean, it's still on their it's website on and live. Yeah, I'm talking about in years past, like when they oh, was yeah. like super duper, like it, it was annoying as absolute hell. So I think that was a huge move not being exclusive anymore with that. Um, but I don't know, there's things about the MLF format that I really do enjoy. I just think, I mean, I, I've, I, everyone knows my thoughts. It, it's a great idea. It was just piss poor executed. Like it, it, some really interesting things and concepts, like being able to take your boat apart, like because you, you can just fish until the end. You don't have to worry about going back. So you can really get into some cool places. What are you smiling about? Me? Yeah. My buddy just said, text me something pretty funny. He said, oh, FB, he said FBD. So he got he got the gist of my rant. <laughs> what boy do? Fish boat docks, stuff. No, we're just fishing boat docks, bro. Oh, my fault. My fault. Yeah. Come on. What do you think I was talking about? Hey, I'm not gonna I'm sorry, Thomas. Get demonetized. No, I, I don't care. This will be re-uploaded tomorrow. Uh what's the cost per waypoint these days? That's a great remember that website a couple years ago where you could sell your waypoints? That like just started happening, brother. Yeah, it was like a year ago. It wasn't this year. Yeah, Millican. What, what's the company's though? name? I didn't say it wasn't. Uh, hang on. Just I the can, tip. I can find out. Do yeah, not look that up like crazy. <laughs> no, no, I don't need to look it up. They. Who do y'all got in the dirt? Real question is who do y'all got in the derby? Which derby are we talking about? Yeah, yeah, Kyle. Which derby are we talking about? Um, I got me. We got so many questions here. I'll throw some Brand, down. Brandon, these guys couldn't catch them at Big Slack. Oh, Jesus. There we go. They're uh, on Big Slack. They talk well, about us? No, nah, they're talking I, no, about that's, I took it as a personal attack. Yeah, it's and you, so. You're probably right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the winning weight last week was like six pounds for five. So, yeah, no one can catch them on Big Slacks. <laughs> Uh, oh, I went out there with a the guide a few years ago. We caught him on Big Slack. I need proof. So we talked about that polygraph. Uh, this was years ago. Was that that musky trip? No, it was. Uh, I went out there with Cornell from YouTube Fish and Vids. Oh, right on. What a what a pullback. Oh yeah, he's the man. I see him he's in every BFL too. He always like will drive by me and just like honk. And, like, gives me the salute and just like keeps going. Such a good dude. Yeah, he's good people. Uh, I got him up for it. Whatever the hell that means. All righty, dude. What are you? Is it voice to text you're using right now or is it you hitting the bottle? 
Uh, let's see. Uh, I caught a couple of nice ones uh, up there. Weird right now. Yeah. Let's see. John. John comment. So Where is John's comment? Oh, there it is. He uh, said hey, Res boys. Legends, but he's the red res legend. Thank you, John. There's no other. It. Yeah, John, uh, message me your content. I would love to get you on the show sometime. Oh, you should have him on. That'd be great. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, if you guys got his numbers, I will. I'll get it from you and I'll kind of pester him about that. Uh, oh, here we go. Mike Dove. I, I totally agree about qualifying for getting information. No way all of those guys are finding their own spots 60 miles away. Okay, but then what kind of information is off limits? All information? Like, like, what is the definition of off information too? I think like, I don't know. I just feel like you got to be really explicit on like how you lay that out. I mean, you cannot talk about specific spots, techniques, any of that. Like the Tuesday nighter at Chesden, I was about to say something to Matt about the river and him and Dylan are like, no, 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 no. And I was like, okay, <laughs> yep. All right. I'll keep my mouth shut. Like there's you nothing like baits techniques spots but you can still google stuff sure, sure. so that's that like information uh research it's like personal self research. research yeah yeah that's that's fine but you can't talk to like jacob wheeler can't call hunter and be like yo where am i going because back in the day didn't they create like forums forums online that were technically public so information could be displayed between people but you just couldn't find the link to the the forums because that was an old trick back in the day to get I around the rules that. like and, and again I've it's like crazy stuff recently about how people are getting rules or getting around that rule yeah so i i don't know like i i'm not trying to be a contrarian here because like i agree in a perfect world to be awesome i just feel like the people like jacob wheeler and Scott Martin, because he was the originator and his dad, they find ways to bend, stretch, whatever you want to say to get the advantage. And I just feel like no matter what stuff, but then what am I saying? Am I saying like, don't have any rules? I, I don't fucking, I, I just don't no, know what I you mean, can do about it. This sport is so cutthroat, even at the levels that we fish at, like it's bad. But if you think that it's okay to bend and break the rules to that extent, mm -hmm. just to win the fishing tournament, I mean, I get it. It's a hundred grand, but these guys are making all their money off of sponsors, anyways. Like, I don't, I don't know. That just takes away the purity of it. What is and the so purity to you? Not live scope. Come <laughs> on, Shut up, dude. It's not pure. Pure, pure as hell. I, nah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess that's a broad term. It's called the purity of bass fishing. But Matty, uh, we what? can put someone who doesn't appreciate the live scope next to you, who both of you guys have it, yeah. but you have the skill over them. So it's like, but what? it shouldn't. It shouldn't be. I have a skill over somebody with a piece of technology that's well. They have thirty years of knowledge over you. Yeah, but live scope takes all that out, out of the equation. What you need to understand and about McCluskey? McCluskey is like it. the greatest barbecue expert, but he's a vegetarian. He's a vegan. Like it makes no <laughs> sense at all. I mean, I don't. We talked about this before we started. I just don't like what it did to bass fishing. It's so <laughs> fun. It's a blast to use, but I'd rather everybody just get along and have a good time and be happy for their friends for winning it's just turn fishing into something i don't like most people are bitches though and like it sucks it uh, but if we didn't have scope we'd be bitching about something else i mean it's most people don't even want to have a conversation like most people just want to complain and it sucks but that's because of social media i blame social media 100 percent for the shit on live scope um if this Gunnerville tournament in the fall, there's a great turnout, I'll eat my words. But if no one shows up to that bitch and it's a bad turnout, then I I, I don't I don't know. Like we'll see. Oh my god, what does Blake's gotta say here? Uh this rant. Sorry, I started something. No, that's good. That's fine. That's fine. People will cheat in the fun game of golf to tell their buddies they shot a 92. Imagine how much they would, <laughs> they would do to hold up a trophy and a few dollars. That's fair. One of us was golfing today. Shut up, man. I didn't know you golf. <laughs> oh, here comes. Oh, who's, who's that? Is that? Who's your boyfriend? 
Oh, dang. That looks fire. That looks really good. Thank you. <laughs> this dude is living the life. Oh, my God. Uh, we got John in the chat. Uh, I never understood the secrecy with which some anglers operate. I've always thought uh, that skill will always prevail. No, absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. How many boats are the Fountainhead Derby's pulling uh, this this summer? That's I think thirteen to fifteen. Yeah, I'll be getting a boat. Hopefully, I don't know. I, I'm going to hope that I get an aluminum boat for next year, so I can fish them more. Um, I'm not doing the Ranger. It's God. It's just a pain in the ass. I really <laughs> want something with an engine. The first I'm couple of tournaments, you can get away with it, but as the season progresses, it's as it's we've fun. learned with what you and Victor did, like Victor was fishing. No, I guess he had a big motor. He could run around. Never mind. I think it was just one tournament. He fished out of the electric only boat. Yeah, it's. I just get bored with my mind. I cannot just troll in a circle for eight hours. I will go insane. I want to go explore that place so freaking bad. So you guys still did really well. Did you no, 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 no. Phil did really well. Did really well. I watched. <laughs> Uh, I, I smoked my whopping 10 pound limit and then I did my part and then we caught all that with his five bites, which, and he missed one that was every bit 12 pounds. It was a freaking, it was a monster. God, I wish he got that one. It was a legend. I know. Rest in peace, bud. Uh, let's see. There we go. I think we already did that one. Yeah, see, live scope uh, allowed us to find the pelagic bass we would have never been able to target. I 100% agree with that. Um, let's see. I love... I love complaining. It fills my heart. Also, misdirecting friends on baits and bites is super dope. Yeah, that's interesting, too, because it's like you can't fish other people's fish. And I think that's really weird to say, but it's 100% mm -hmm. true when you get really good at it. And reason I've personally had a good year so far in kayak fishing is and the Antietam Bassmasters is I look for generic crap. I just need to know the section just to help with practice to cut it down. Like I, I've gotten more comfortable with that when I was a kid. <laughs> you want too much information, which sounds weird. Like you get too granular. You want to know the bait, the stumps, all that crap. But now it's like, do I go up at Lake Anna or down? Just help me because I got one day, so I'm not fishing the whole place. And yeah, definitely. Let me see. I got one more question. question. Hmm? He oh, vanished. him? Yeah, he did. What are you eating? Who, me? Yes. I don't even know, to be honest with you. It's mac and cheese, but it's with some chicken in it. I don't know what the sauce mm. is. But it's, God but damn, it's that nuts. looks so good. I'll tell you that. It's nuts. I don't know I how don't... you're eating that hot meal outside with 100% humidity. <laughs> when it tastes like this, you, you're not worried about the humidity. Facts. Ah, oh, dude. Mm. That's where I want to move to, though, is down near Richmond. Hopefully, if I can convince my wife, I got to get down there. Uh, as much as I love my Maryland guys, I hate that I have to commute so far to fish any major tournament. Um, August 22nd. Mm. I'm on the way. Oh, okay. Got you. Okay. That's awesome, dude. That's Is that when you my project, project starts in Richmond? So, oh, I thought, you, I thought you were getting a house or something. No, not yet. You can move in with me, McCluskey. The house looks giant. That ain't bad. And it comes with a cook. And a pool. Personal yeah. chef. Yep. Yeah, I'm, th I'm thinking about putting some catfish in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so nasty. Yeah, I'm dead serious. We almost did it the other day. Let's see. Can you pull out the chatter? Put a snakehead in the pool. Yes, do that, please. Someone's no, got to bring him down here. They talking about us, fool. All right, that's interesting. All right, that that comment we cannot say. Uh, where's that one? 100% agree. Uh, I would never do the carousel and the press ring stuff. Yeah, 100%. And then, oh, here's the comment there. Uh, Lake Anna water temp is way up, and this has killed the action above the 208 bridge. How do you adjust on rivers when the water temp is rising? It's near 90 in the upper Lake Anna and 80s at the midpoint. I would it, on the river. It doesn't seem to affect them as bad. Honestly, it's still the kind of if you find the right grass bed, you can pummel them. But it's just some of them are in six inches of water, and uh, there seems to be some fish 
deep too, actually. I think current fish aren't as aren't as affected by mm-hmm. high temps as like just still water fish are. That's a good point. Yeah, I hundred percent agree with that. Um, yeah, that's basically it. And then I think you can run shade patterns too. Like so, the upper Potomac I've been practicing for it is about a thousand degrees, and there's about five inches of water, and we're catching three pound smallmouth in an inch, but it's because it's where the shade line is. And they're just, they're huddled up right on that right now. Cause the sun is so hot. And even though the water is boiling, you can still find them there. Um, so I, I agree with that. Uh, let's see, Adrian, uh, you just want a gift card to Jake's bait and tackle. Uh, uh, let's see. Maddie must've taken down his trophy wall after SB beat him. Um, someone oh, had to do it funny. one time. He broke my street. Now I'm stuck in second place. We got lucky. Hey, you got like three second places in a row. Exactly. I can't win. I'm just kidding. Yeah, now you're going to come back and get like six in a row. It's fine. Nah. Is it better to come in second or top 10 a bunch so you don't have to give away your juice or your bait? Or is it better just to win the big derby, but then you have to explain to everyone what you did? I'm taking the W every time. Win it. Interesting. Of course. I'll tell them when I caught them on anyways, so. Yep. Yeah, and I guess like spots and locations, it doesn't matter as much in lakes versus tidal. I think tidal, I, I never think tidal guys are way more protective than lake guys, but mm-hmm. that's just me personally, which I under, yeah, I get it. Like, I understand that. It's so lame. Just, I tell them everything. You do? Oh, yeah. I'll tell What's them your best area? <laughs> What's your best area? <laughs> Where do we go? Uh, on the Chickahominy? Yeah. I mean, I fish upriver. What's that mean? Uh, anywhere from Brickyard up. That's where I'm at. Why? Because I would much rather fish lily pads and grass on the main river than be downriver fishing a bunch of wood and boring stuff. Why? Oh, just vibes. <laughs> just vibes. vibes. Love it. That's all I fish off of. That needs to be a shirt. That needs That's to be a shirt. I fish all vibes. That it's is true. Good. You That's guys know, it's like, I've never map studied i don't look at my graphs all four of them yeah i know this dude bought a hundred thousand dollars off of either drug money or credit cards and i don't think he uses them very much <laughs> yeah no. oh my god, god. <laughs> swear to god one this past spring we were taking off at bugs like going down nut push and we didn't even go down there once in practice <laughs> i wasn't gonna say anything but he's like got both of his graphs up just driving i'm like where the fuck are we going dude <laughs> I fish, I fish all vibes, man. <laughs> it was so funny. I was like, I let him figure it out. We caught him. That's right. We caught him. We had a great. It was so fun. We caught him. So much fun. Uh, let's see. We need to convince Maddie Ice to make a concentrated effort to make the jump to bigger events. What type of this fountain head? Been trying to do that forever. Well, what kind of events? Me. Well, no, I know you. I'm like, we gotta get him. I mean, we gotta get this dude in the opens ASAP. I mean, I don't know. On. Do it. Just I want. Just, I would love to do it. It's just. It needs to start with BFLs and stuff like that. I mean, the financial burden of just saying screw it, I'm gonna go fish nine opens and try Fair. and be a new angler. But also, it's like. Okay, if you look at the money, like money line, like what you you can possibly make from BFLs, it's probably smarter to fish the opens. Even though you're investing more, like your chances of making or breaking even even is uh is going to be better fishing the opens than mm-hmm. the BFLs because you're going to spend the same amount of going to practice for a couple of days to fish a one day event mm-hmm. versus you know in Fair. The opens you're traveling a lot more. You're investing more money, but with your skill level, it will pay itself. You can make money in the Toyota series. I think. I think, I think it's I think Toyota. It's, it's, maybe the the Toyota, Toyota. Yeah. that idea of the hunter's idea to fish the Northerns would be sick. Yeah, I would love That's to do good. that. Plus, you it's can't like make shit in the BFLs, man. To you like, can't. Not, you can't not so much for fishing for money for, in the BFLs, just like getting used to that bigger tournament. It, you can do that already, though. 
you don't need to. You don't need. I hate the BFLs with a passion. I, well, no, I love. I absolutely love our BFL weeks. But I will say that they're fire. The it's super fun. Yeah, the weeks the are fun. Weeks are awesome, but the tournaments. That, it's yeah. like, what am I doing here? Yeah, it's the well. Yeah, it's the best week of my life when we do the BFL stuff. Now, some of the lakes are actually like Smith. I mean, like, come on, that's a that time of year. It's just fun to be there. Kerr, that was an awesome week. Yeah. Uh, you know, High Rock, eh, sometimes hit or miss. No, no, sometimes drain that place, <laughs> put a mall in. We need a we need the biggest JC pennies of all time there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I there last week I caught three bass all week. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh it's bad. No, but I think I think Toyota would be a lot of fun. Um because the lakes are also like, come on, it's the St. Lawrence and Champlain or Oneida. It's like those those places are bitching. Like this would be so much fun. And I really do think there's more talent in consistency of three days versus you will have that dude that just runs into five on a BFL. Yeah. Not to take away yeah. to any of the good anglers. There are a lot of great anglers. I'm not saying that, but you still can have five good frog bites, so to speak, one day. Yep. So does that mean we're fishing the Toyotas next year? I'm I think down. so. Come on, Maddie. And anyone in this, anyone watching want to pay for me? That'd be sick. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, just put it on the credit card. Dude, I'll, I'll wrap my boat and I'll tattoo you on my body if you pay for my boat. <laughs> yeah, that seems fair. <laughs> I think so. You'll fit shirtless then? Nobody wants I'll to fish, see this. If, if they're paying for it, I'll fish naked. <laughs> Full Matt Robertson. <laughs> Fur coat. Oh, uh, shit. Just in your boxers. Combining two different uh, money money schemes. Oh my goodness! I'll do it. We got we got John. Just do it. Yeah. Just no. It. No. I think that's, that's an interesting proposition. All right. Um. Shit. We're almost two hours here. We're running out of steam. We're missing Phil's. The problem. Yeah. This year was weird. I missed the BFLs. Honestly, just the touring. I'm gonna have to make that a thing next year for sure. We're gonna yeah. step it up though. We're doing the Toyotas. Yeah, we'll do the Toyotas too. Well, I mean, I'm saying that like I, I sucked with tournaments this year because of things that I have going on. But I mean, Matt, you've probably fished 300 tournaments this year so far, right? Yeah, I still I, suck. I have I, no excuses. I, I just shut suck. up, shut <laughs> up. You've had a boat for like a year and a half, for fuck's uh, sake. Before yeah. you were in a freaking like 12 foot pelican from Bass Pro Shop. Like Fair. this is your first time fishing these big lakes like that. Like uh, still not an excuse. Man, yes, I get to it is. Food fish, like way more than everyone else that fishes these events. Like, if you're a freshman baseball player in the college and it's your first time seeing a Latino guy from Cuba throw a 98, you got a little bit of an excuse when you can't hit it the first time. Like, no I, like excuses, man. No excuses. So no, if you lose, there your, there, so if you lose your lower unit with, with a guy, way. if Maddie lost his lower unit and he had to troll around all day, yeah, twice. But if Maddie lost his lower <laughs> unit, he's still gonna fucking catch eighteen pounds. He doesn't count. Sorry, exactly. I was looking at that's what was under the screen. Did y'all see that? Point. Yeah. Huh? Oh, the blue. Do that again. Yeah. Do that again. I don't know what no, I did. You stuck your tongue out between your fingers. Oh, I went like I went like that, <laughs> and a bunch of balloons popped up. That's fucking weird. Sorry. I mean. Sometimes, dude, like I said before we started filming, it's like you're the coolest fucking dude, and we all believe in fishing karma. It's like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, it's just shit luck. It's a stretch, it's just I don't know, it's bad luck. Yeah, but I mean, Sorry. Matt, like you are having this is your second full year, if I'm not mistaken, the BFLs with a boat or with a boat with a big boat. Um, and so that's a hell of an improvement when you look at your stats. Yeah, I I mean I mean yeah right compared, I did like yeah very very poorly last year just poorly this year so far. Well, we got what two more events that I may or may not fish at this point because the boats questionable, the vans questionable. Like, aren't you in like twelfth we'll place in the AOI? Yes. Yeah, we we're not supposed to bring that up. You, it's like a perfect game. You don't talk about that stuff. But anyway, oh, I don't care. Game. That's twelfth place. That's twelfth place. It's not like I'm in first. No, but it's a, a 
from going from zero to that, it's a big improvement. And I, dude, okay, so again, it's mindset. So when I fish title, I don't try to win anymore. I just try to be consistent because I learned when I tried to chase the bite, I always sucked and would See, do that's worse. That's the difference, I guess, between me and yeah. I, like I just always want to try to win, and whether I come in with zero mm -hmm. or thirty pounds, like I'm going out to try to win. But if you're consistent, but, but twelfth place. I don't yes, care about winning AOI. But something I changed. <laughs> what changed between this year and last year? Yeah, this year and last year when it came to your mindset and things that you did. Do you think you did everything the exact same way? Pretty much. Yeah. Pr I mean, just maybe more experience and like finding better fish. It, there's only one event that I've really done well in that has me up there in the points. And that's the first one. It's Smith Mountain. You did really good there. there. <laughs> and it was thanks to Hunter. He threw he threw me a bait on the spot that I was catching him. He's like, you should try these. I was like, okay. And I literally rigged it up, made a cast, caught like a six pounder, and I fished there and caught multiple good fish. And then I fished with Maddie too. And fished a I couple didn't show you anything. Oh, no. I guess you did catch a big smallmouth on one of the No, places. the smallmouth spot where I caught that big smallmouth, dude. That's like I fished that with you. But I was like, these are it was in the same areas. That I was catching them, like mouse mm -hmm. weeds, the first few hundred yards, or whatever. But like, I did not fish that spot. So I fished that with you. I was like, shoot, I'm going to check this out. Caught a giant, I thought it was a giant smolly, four pounder, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. Um, but yeah, like that's like the one. But lake you put them in, in, put in the boat. You I did put them in, in the boat. boat for sure. And you did it good enough the rest of the events to still be there. So just to say, like, I only had one good event. Well, if that was the case, you wouldn't be in just 12th. But that is the case because I think I got, uh, where was the next one? Bugs? Mm -hmm. Like 40th. And then the deck, it, High Rock. I caught one fish. <laughs> okay, that one I can't <laughs> help you with. Yeah, three yeah. events. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's just like one good event. I can help you. Screw that like <laughs> Fill it up with cement. I'm telling you. Yeah. But we'll see how the James goes if I can fish it and then go from there. What, why the mentality of if you're not first, you're last? Because a lot of people have that and it works extremely well. Like, uh, I don't really like, I personally am not going to win an AOI. Like, I want to win one. Like, I want to just go win. Because losing sucks. Yes. That's like, I just, I just want to go win one. I, I want the first place trophy. Like I want to win. I don't care about, I, I'm not consistent. I'm not a consistent angler. Like I can go out and have a good event. Mm. So that's what I'm going off of. Well, that's why all three of you are famous is because you do swing for the fences because you do hit a home runs. No, but Maddie wins AOYs all the time. He's he like on count. third year in a row at Fountainhead. Because he doesn't actually swim I want it on the river this year. <clears throat> and on the river this year. Yeah. Oh, I want it on the river oh, this year. you want it. Sorry. Oh, I, 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 badly, this year. badly. I personally don't think he fishes like that. I think in his mind he does, but his body language doesn't. Um, I got to only fish with him for like three hours in the middle of a blizzard, but I got to really watch the way his mind works and everything, and I don't he's trying to find the best pattern and it's not just lock a glide bait in and just get five big ones. He's literally thinking what the fish want behavior wise. And then that dictates, even though he's trying to fish to win, that's not his to do that. He does that by figuring out what they want and the best pattern is no matter what. It just seems like that's how his mind works. I know he's here and we're talking about him, but like but, at least, like, <laughs> at least body language wise and how he was cycling through baits to get him to react and change. It wasn't just, I'm going to force this. And I feel like when I think fish to win, it's the guy that throws the jig or the glide bait. It's like, I'm going to Carl Jockums in this thing and I'm going to fish this no matter what versus the guy that you're right, he doesn't always win, but he's figuring out in general what is the pattern on this lake that is going to give me the high probability to win. I think that's his magic sauce. Yeah, I agree. But, I agree 100%. Hunter? Agree. <laughs> Hunter, no, great. Right. think it's. I think it's interesting how many people don't think about a pattern. That just go out and fish, and they're like, "Oh, mm -hmm. they should eat this chatterbait on this tree." But it's like, yep. why? 
like why are they gonna eat that like no one really, and i and i'm guilty of it most of the time i just go out and i'm like yeah they should eat this frog and these lily pads but it's like why so yeah yeah mccluskey's all right he's all right this will be the last question of the night here because i know people got got lives um aoi is something to be damn proud of i'd honestly take more pride in that than winning a random one day event 12th place is awesome sb and i again i personally think that that's 100 percent true i think aoi is aoi I'm, trumps a single tournament every time mm -hmm. <clears throat> it yeah. shows not just your consistency but your like consistency over everybody else over the entire year aoi is like absolutely better than winning a single tournament yeah overall yeah, but win, i mean though. i mean dude it's overall over the whole year There's, yeah but what else do you compare it to like you oh, gotta be chasing the w every week i mean i still like i would personally would i love to win at aoi yes but i know myself i know how i fish like i have a better chance of just winning one throughout a year than getting aoi so that's what i'm gonna try to do but hmm. dude AOI is sick. I see having fish with both mats. They have mindsets that push you to keep pace to to speak. Yep, I hundred percent agree with that. Uh, Josh, stop fishing a Ned rig and go offshore. Let's uh, go. I, I don't disagree with that. I also grew up fishing fisheries where there's only six fish, which hurt me. Like I really, if I lived at a place that was actually good, I think that would have changed my mindset growing up for sure um let's see here having fish oh i just did that one because i'm just having a joe biden moment all right last question last question uh are you guys fishing the james and who is going to run to the chick no one here is going to run to the chick we just talked about that Hunter's running to the chick for sure <laughs> never mind bro i can't get a bite on the james man what never i they're there if i, if I fish a durb out of osborne I'm, I'm making the run why even in the tracker, baby. Bro. <laughs> hey, you already know that. What do you mean, why? I could, I could win it out of the chick. You can't win it out of the James? <clears throat> Me? Nope. Sure can't. See, know. that's what I mean. Like, you're re being realistic with yourself. Like, yeah, you, sure. know, you know your area is there. You know what you like to fish there. Your chances are the highest there. Versus you like trying to fish the James where you're not as familiar, you're not as comfortable fishing the hardcover stuff there. I guess you can win it there, but like your chances are better in the chip. Yeah. I, I tried it last year for the BFL. I fished the James for two day two practice days straight. <clears throat> One a half day and a full day in the Appomattox and stuff around there. I didn't get a bite, man. I ran to the chick and I caught like 20 of them. Hmm. Wow. That's crazy. Confidence zone. Yep. It's all about confidence. The run isn't it? The run also isn't as far as people think. It's like 40 minutes to the, the mouth. Chicken, yeah, I'll get to the chicken like 35, 40 minutes. Uh, last year, I, I ran it in my, uh, my 186 with a 150. And I got to Colonial Harbor, which is almost near the dam in 50 minutes so like yeah i'll do the run again guys i mean i really appreciate you all coming on and really giving insight into like the james and just any tidal water fisheries in general you know starting clockwise and working down this thing um mick gypsy you're up what do you got coming up um i thought we had fountainhead this coming weekend but i was wrong about that <laughs> texted matt and he's like we have fountainhead this weekend i was like uh let me check but uh no fountainhead this weekend there's potomac teams this weekend which i'm really looking forward to I, get the dub. I know i want it bad but um wednesday night on the river and then i wish there was some tuesdays and thursdays on uh chesden but there's not come to the james brother I know. Oh, it's, it's on the James. James. What's on the James? Wait, no, there is a Tuesday nighter on the uh, on Chesden tomorrow. I texted yeah. Chase. He said there wasn't. They added it. Oh, I saw it today. Great. So if you feel like coming down and winning some money tomorrow, let's nah. go. Nah, if I if I wasn't working this week, I would. But I got I got I got actually have some work to do this week. So that's good. 
yeah make real money not just gas money what do you mean not make real money this past week i meant to ask you this how much did you make this weekend if you don't mind be asking it was was a good amount i'll text you you make like was it enough you didn't have to work for a week yeah (laughs) (laughs) i think i was working for gas money oh and the worst part about saturday is these cat trails do side pots and if anybody fishes a cat trail go into the side pot because i would have made more money off of the side pot than i did for second place so i would have oh, more than doubled you didn't go in the side pot no i didn't know oh, i just I showed up i was like oh there's a tournament let's go bob and i had no idea like a snakehead side pot no just like whoever finishes highest and the people who put money in the side pot i think is what it is oh. first place didn't do it and third place ended up getting it and it was like almost a thousand dollars shit that's freaking awesome yeah uh, screwed the pooch there but yeah Never. i've got some bfls coming up i've got uh fountainhead i think that's about it hopefully i can get the boat in the van fixed by the time the bfls roll around otherwise i'm just gonna call it quits on the season and just oh, you got a fish fountainhead I know everybody's too nice to me and like are very willing to give me their boats. I appreciate why, it. Guys. Why are you such a masochist? Is like, do you have to have a like, contract yeah, signed? Like, like a, I, I don't know. Take the boat. I don't know if it was like something bigger. If it was like a regional or just like okay. so hard to do for like a regular BFL, where I know that I also don't want to just like. I'm running bad, dude. Every person I've fished with this year, I've broken their boat. Or like their boat has broken with me in their boat. I'm not kidding. Dylan? Yep. I had to get a brand new lower unit and prop like two weeks ago on the James. Uh, Ace? We like broke his battery mid-tournament. Hunter broke his whole console. Me? I've gone through two lower units and pro- like whatever other issue I'm going through right now. I'm like a black cloud. I don't want to well, take anybody's boat. The only I way got you can out of the boat, the day <laughs> I almost got launched out of his boat. <laughs> the only way you break the curse, though, is you keep cycling through until it breaks. Right. You get, you don't just stop. I know. That's so, what I'm, I'm trying, but I just don't want to do that to any of my friends' boats. You, you can know? break my boat. <laughs> we broke yours, but I also we put it back together pretty, that actually awesome. better than it was in the first place. Yeah, that was awesome. Oh, oh God! <laughs> Best comment. Of it the was night. the delayed reaction, dude. I'm telling you, I got a, I got something going on. Don't fish with me. Nobody uh, can fish anymore. My God. Hey, if it makes you, Matt, you remember? You know what I did to you? Almost. Oh yeah, but it was a, an almost. Nothing bad came from that, but it was very funny. I almost put the gambler on the boat ramp and the van in the Chickahominy. In about ten seconds, it was awesome. Uh, anything on the channel you got to promote or hype or sponsor or anything like that? Nope. Come cool. check it out if you want. All right, as always, guys, that stuff is already linked down below, and I also linked uh, Mr. McCluskey's Instagram and his Facebook in the episode description. I didn't know if he had a YouTube channel because it was like Got Hills or something. I didn't know if that was yours or not. So it's Alex's channel. He just oh, Alex channel, and it's yeah. Got Gills. Let's give Got Gills a God, big mention God, here. Yes. He is like number one partner of all time. I fished with yeah. Matt last week. Goddamn, did I learn a lot? But man, it's fun watching him fish. So I don't blame him. Amen. Yeah. We haven't talked about Alex enough on the podcast. We I think have we need to. Time. He doesn't get enough love. He He's does not. Alex, if you'd like to come on. Yeah, absolutely. I always have an open Alex have his own show. Alex, Alex if you're Ellis listening, <laughs> give me his number. We'll make that work. Um, uh, Big Honey P. Yep. Glad okay. I finally got you on. I've been asking you to talk about the James River for two years. Hey man, better better late than never. You know what I mean. What do you got coming up? Coming up. You still have a YouTube channel? I mean, He's I'm starting a golf man. YouTube channel, dude. Not yet. Not yet. Coming up. What do I got? Might jump into BFL next month. Um, September. 
I think me and Matthew have some Angler's Choice tournaments. That's about it. Fascinating stuff. Hunter, thanks again for coming on. I really do appreciate it. You did add a lot to the conversation. Um, as always, guys, link in the episode description to everything we talked about. Uh, please go check out all these people. Support them on their channels. Like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you guys next time on Fishing the DMV. Bye. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by...